I mean, I heard the nice little voice that the the recording has started. So so glad. She's so, she's so nice. <laughs> All right. Well, good uh, good afternoon and or good evening and uh, good morning on this side of the globe. Hope everybody's uh, doing well. Thank you for your patience once again. As you know, I. I lecture one class right before this, and then I, I jump in here, and I, I just can't <laughs> manipulate two two computers and try and do two things at uh, at once when it comes down to it. So please forgive me about uh, a little bit starting a little bit uh, later than um, than normal. But uh, thanks so, once again, not only for your participation last time in the in the session that we had, but also. And in the classroom as uh, as well. And thus far, and I've gotten through about half, I think maybe about three quarters of them over the weekend already. In regards to your PowerPoint presentations, nice job, really, really nice job, and a lot of detail in the in the notes section that you, that you all had. And I've been choosing between A, A, B, and C, just phenomenal, uh, phenomenal discussion that was going on. In the little in the little notes section uh, below, so kudos to you all for for doing so and putting a lot of time and effort. I saw some charts and graphs that were just really blowing me away, and I just yeah i I was really impressed with everything that you had to had to offer there. So thank you for for putting the time and effort into the assignment as well as your comments in the discussion board. Now we'll have. Uh, this session and then the next session, I will have just a brief 10 minutes or so. I guess it's going to be midterm already. Yikes, I can't believe that. But it's going to be midterm and that's going to be coming up. So I will have a brief review session on some of the things that are in there. Now, those of you who have had me before, here's my PS and here's what I'm, what I'm telling you. This is my disclosure. I am not responsible for what's on the examination. Did I tell you that I'm not responsible for what's on the examination? I just thought I would mention to you guys that I'm not responsible for what is on the examination that you receive. <laughs> okay? So there, I've said it three times, so it, should, so it should be okay. There's my stamp of approval. What I can do is facilitate a little bit with you and give you a general idea and conceptualize some of the things that might be appearing on the on the examination, and I'll work alongside you in the best of my ability to to get that to you, and hopefully a lot of those things will uh, you know will stick in your mind and it will hopefully appear somewhere somewhere along the uh, along the way. So keep uh, keep that in mind. Also, just a, a gentle reminder. Also, in the discussion boards, when we have the discussion boards, remember to post substantively to your colleagues. What I mean by substantively, it's not, th thanks, good post, uh, great job, I like that. <laughs> okay, what did you like about it? So you guide me, you guide me and you, t you tell me what, to, what you exactly liked about, the, about that posting. So maybe three to five sentences in, uh, in length in there, that's a good solid, uh, solid posting. But uh, yeah, so be respectful not only to your colleagues but also to your yourself when we're looking at trying to get a lot of these points taken care of and a lot of the the areas um, overcome, shall we say, with uh, discussion board postings. It's not necessarily true to have more discussion board postings. So if you have five discussion board postings, including your main post, and each one of those five discussion board postings says, "Great job, nice, I agree." Etc. That's not really a discussion board posting. I really don't count those as much as someone who's perhaps posted twice and substantively. So more is not oftentimes better than what the regular discussion board postings are as far as the quantity. I'm looking for quality as well as what the rubrics are are stating in there. Okay. So just keep that in mind. I'm trying to give you some friendly advice as we're as we're going along with your um, your discussion boards, okay? Nothing, nothing major. I'm just uh, throwing that out there for you. Also, remember to post on time. That's that's another thing that I've been seeing too. That the, the discussion boards haven't been uh, posted on time. A small percentage, but I'm just trying to give you the benefit of the doubt. As many points as uh, as possible towards your grade. I'm looking out for you. I don't. I don't like going in there like hey, 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 now. I got him on that one. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't want to do that. What I'd like to do is facilitate and make sure that you're getting a quality education. But at the same time, you got to help yourself and helping me 
to provide you with a, a good mark rather than just typing it in at the at the last minute. Okay, I've said my piece. I'm done. I'm not saying anything else about it. I know many of you are wondering and, and worried. Does Dr. Milan have it? Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Dunkin' Donuts at your service. I'm only down to one, so if you would be so kind as to send me one along the way across the pond, that would be great. Probably by the end of the hour, I'm definitely going to need it. So away we go with, with Chapter 13. So what we're going to take a look at this week, I have notes, these, and then I have these that we're going to be going through. So there's going to be a lot of information that's going to be coming to you. We're not going to do all death by PowerPoint or death by uh, by numbers and, and statistic or statistical analysis. I do have a short video. I actually figured out how to put a video in here. We're moving forward. We're making progress. We're blazing a trail. Hopefully you can see the video. Hopefully you'll be able to hear it as well. The last class, it was my, uh, my experimentation there, and it did. Worked kind of well. Some people could get it. Some people didn't because of the bandwidth. But my my apologies. I am trying. I'm integrating as many things as uh, as I can. And then they have this drawing tool that I'll be using in here too for the whiteboard. So just a cool bunch of things that uh, that we have to offer. All right. So without further ado, what we are going to be looking at today, we're going to be looking at financial condition analysis. Well. What is that? So we're going to look at your capital acquisitions and allocations and different types of analyses that you can utilize in a facility to obviously manage that healthcare organization that, that much better. And also understanding how that business is going to, going to function. So what we're looking at is HCO, so if I use a lot of acronyms again, HCO, Healthcare Organization, we're going to take a look at how to understand what that healthcare organization is, what are the finances that are going to be involved in that healthcare organization, and then basically just kind of overlook it and see how we can assess it. There's going to be different methods, there's going to be different areas here most of which I have I literally been working on this for three hours, so hopefully it, <laughs> it works out for, for your understanding because it helped, that helped me as well. But just breaking it down into, into numbers and uh, little acronyms and things that I found were beneficial to myself, hopefully it will be beneficial to you all um, as well as we progress through um, the lecture. So one of the most important aspects and characteristics of a business is the financial condition. And I'm going to start you guys out with a question. Why is this so important to understand the financial condition? And I could premise this probably by the 1980s moment. Duh, I understand. Like, yeah. But at the same time, a lot of people don't indulge in the financial condition. They, they go and they go and they go and they leave the finances behind and they oftentimes forget this is what's driving the organization. <laughs> so we have to be cognizant of that fact. So the chat box is open down at the, at the bottom or wherever your uh, screen is. But please uh, feel free to, uh, to log in there and s say why is it important to uh, look over these financial conditions and financial characteristics. And much like I told the last class, if uh, if you don't participate, I start telling really bad hospital jokes. I told one of them, they participated the rest of the time. So, for example, if you're not participating now, I had an opportunity to date an anesthesiologist. She was a real knockout. I should see that thing lighting up right now. I say, okay, Dr. Milan, we're done. We're done. <laughs> Yeah, exa exactly. Yep, see, I knew my joke was terrible. I knew you guys would jump in. <laughs> yes, to, for the organization to achieve its goals, for it to estimate its profitability, looking at future future achievements, looking at the future profitability, and looking at the nasty thing called, well, perhaps that they're going to be losing out on something. We all know that 
some years are better than others. We all know that uh, we're going to take a loss eventually somewhere along the line, but a strong organization that is uh, indelving itself into um, their their estimates for profitability and for losses will be uh, be on top of things. Our or my former place, which I still call it R because I've loved working alongside those people, but at Franciscan Alliance, and I use that again, but it's the best example I can give you, their financial organization and their willingness to come and demonstrate, good or bad, was top-notch. We used to have those managerial meetings and our accountants used to come upstairs there to those meetings and formalize a, a real in-depth analysis demonstrating where the profits were, where the losses were, why we were um, losing patience and how much profit we were losing, how much dish money, and I can't remember what the uh, acronym stands for anymore because it's been a while, but we used to get funding from the state that was applicable because we were a nonprofit organization and that money was pushed into us and quite a bit. There were some years that we were receiving between 8 and $10 million because of a nonprofit organization. And that was a big, big push for us, and that made us run away from that ever impending wave that was coming over, over the top of us, trying to, trying to touch us. So yeah, so with estimates in, in profitability as well as looking at the, the long term. So does the organization in general have the opportunity here to accomplish its mission? What are some of the financial strongholds? What are some of the financial pitfalls that might be involved? within the organization that needs to be taken care of and needs to be looked at from our, our accountants. And then results often focus on the business's financial strengths, and I like that they mentioned it first, and then the weaknesses. Those are, are pretty much two, two no, um, brainers there. But it's, it, you know, it's important to have a financial analysis not only for our profitability, but uh, also to understand the solubility of the organization and who around us is competing with us in getting these areas that might be a little bit better than us? And why are we slipping a little bit here in this organization is going to be um, looking, looking forward. So evaluating the strengths and weaknesses, of that to me, and I could be wrong, but that to me would be something that's going to be done on a daily basis and needs to be, needs to be looked at not only from accounting but also from our executive team as well, and that's uh, in, important for the future of the organization. So there's several techniques that are that are being used here, and we'll take a look at the, at these three rather quickly. So looking at the financial statement analysis, we're looking at uh, the uh, focusing of information on the the business statements uh, with the goal of actually assessing what the financial condition is going to be. Now, and, and please excuse me, if I take my glasses off here, I can see far, but when I put papers and things and look at notes in front of me, oh, forget it. It's, my, it's like the blind leading the blind over here. Just, yeah, so don't get scared. I know, you know, my my 35-year-old face here is, um, is as such, but this is the best I can do. So in dealing with a, a lot of these um, uh, situations, the analysis, for, for example, you're looking at uh, a third party that is going to be able to take a look at this from a, a different set of lenses, no pun intended, audit the figures, and also see how it's going to represent the, the overall uh, true health of the organization. It's good to have a third party in there because finances need to, need to be, well, okay, I was going to say solvent, there you go. Yeah, solvency to determine how the, the power of that company is, is going, to, going to be. So yeah, very, very good. Thank you for taking the words right out of my mouth. So yeah, it's looking at the true health of the organization, how things are going to function, but more importantly, the third party is able to identify some of the key concepts that might be lacking in that financial report and how they can be uh, formulated a little bit, a little bit better. And sometimes there are some caveats that are that are associated with that. But a good um, consultant will be able to come in and work alongside the uh, accountants as well as the executive team to make that final decision there. Then the oper operating uh, indicator analysis that's focusing on operating the data with the goals of explaining the overall financial. Um, 
indicators here in the financial performance. So basically, the what I refer to as the, the op in, the <laughs> operating indicator, then that ratio analysis from the, is going to come from your income statement, and that's going to be from that particular income statement's point of view. So you're going to have an operating indication of your financial por uh, performance from that income income statement. Also, you need to kind of take a look at um, how the the cash flow overall is, is going to be impacted. So a lot of that is going to deal with, with the cash flow, and that's going to come through, I'm going to reg uh, regress a little bit, that's going to come through your financial analysis, which was the first one that, that we touched on. So financial analysis is going to be dealing with, the, with your cash flow. And then finally, your economic added, added value here. You're, you're looking at assessing managerial performance. This is kind of taking you to the next, next level, if you will, in regards to index calculations as well as uh, the resources that are, that are being utilized uh, on the, the investments and eventually um, that are going to be appraised, if you will. So it's uh, taking it one step above everything else that is uh, being, being looked at here. So for the purposes of our discussion today and some of our facts and figures, what we are going to be using is the Riverside Memorial Hospital, again, and this is just going to be to illustrate some of these analyses here that we just, uh, just touched on briefly. Oh. Okay, moving, in. moving into the nuts and bolts of, uh, of things here, and I'm going to use my, my new pen. I'm going to try this out. Hopefully this, uh, this actually works. Okay, and now I'm going to take my glasses off again so I can see my notes here. All right, so your, your income statement here, and the, let, me, let me premise this by, by saying that this number over here is going to be dealing with, uh, with millions, okay? That's what we're going to be uh, looking at. It means million in, the, in this case. The income statement that's a, that you see before you is going to indicate to you that this is a traditional form of or for that, to, that particular um, business there. So you're going to be looking at, uh, at different things uh, in this uh, traditional form of business. Your in income statement here for... For example, let's take a look at, uh, um, where did it go, less, right here, this one here, oh, I'm getting better with this, oh, I'm so improved. The last time I had big X's and things all over the place, and those, those guys were saying probably really nasty things about that I couldn't draw, and it's <laughs> still lopsided. But looking at this, you're looking at... Uh, uh, less, the provision for bad debts. And what, is, what does that mean? Well, in this case here, the provision of bad debts is going to be our patients, our fictional patients that are going to be involved here with, um, without any, any money or perhaps without um, insurance. But at the same time, if you, if you take a look at uh, the column here and, and based on 2013, because this is 2013 here, and this one here is going to be 2014, you can see that we have an increase now in, uh, in revenue. So things are, are getting better out there. So there's more income. There's more pa patient volume. There's more things that are, that are going to be occurring here. Now there's going to be uses for... Um, resources that are going to be more more effective. So what, what am I talking about here? Well, if you take a look at expenses for nursing, for example, and then the, ser the dietary services uh, over here, you can see that the, there's a, a definite need. It did go up a little bit from 2013 because there's only four four thousand or four million something here, and then five it went up to five million something over here. So that's a, in a way, that's kind of a good thing because you see that there's more people that are coming into this facility. There's more need for uh, the, res the resources that you, that you have out here. 
Now, the other interesting fact, is, too, is dealing with the employee health and welfare area here, which is right over here. And that is uh, demonstrating, too, that uh, it's uh, working, you're doing it more with less, basically. So the um, nursing and dietary groups here will, um, due to the expansion, are, you know, in, increasing in uh, in their services. And so in, in a way, that's a, that's a good thing, but then all of a sudden you have the fact that you have uh, tired, tired workers that, that are out there as well. So this is right now where we're at. It's a, it's a good thing because we can see that the revenue increase from 13 to 14 has, uh, has uh, just occurred there, okay? Now, in looking at uh, the balance, uh, the balance sheet, and again, my apologies to you from looking from place to place, but th this is the best uh, method that I, <laughs> that I can have instead of having all these different arrows in uh, in things. Now, your your balance sheet here, again, we're looking we're looking at this uh, this number over here, and that's going to be in uh, in millions. Okay, so that. Um, is in, in millions. So if we're looking at, uh, uh, oh, okay. Let me, yeah, let me answer that real quick. Uh, uh, bad, uh, bad debts. Well, one of the bad debts w could be something such as your patients um, coming in with uh, no insurances, no no coverages, having too many patients, not enough, uh, not enough resources for uh, covering those patients, etc. Because if those patients don't pay, for example. You do, <laughs> and that's what we found out being a nonprofit. A lot of our a lot of our patients that were coming in, that created a a bad debt for us, and that's where that dish money that we received from the state that's when that pushed in, and that's when that was coming in. So that's that's one of the you know caveats of um, being nonprofit, but also that's a caveat there of carrying a, a bad debt, or it could or it could be, for example, if you have too many MRI machines and you don't have enough patients for those MRI machines. They're not coming in, you don't have enough revenue, and you have brand new MRI machines. By the way, you still have to pay for them. <laughs> so those um, those little things come in, come into play when you're when you're dealing with some of the, the bad debts. So that's where you have to take a look at your demographics. You have to take a look at your population regarding the types of illnesses that they may, may be experiencing. And that is all going to uh, come into play when it's when it's dealing with uh, with your your debt ratio there, okay. So in in this uh, in this balance sheet here, again it's showing where the business is uh, great, great. I'm glad. <laughs> um, I got through to somebody today. Yes, we're looking at uh, a business here in in this case our, our hospital facility being at a being at a certain point, okay. So that means we're looking at uh, the the cash equivalent that is that is going to be here, and that that cash equivalent is going to be dealing with something from uh, from the bank or something that perhaps is going to be dealing with um, with the stocks. Now, one good thing about the balance sheet here, it's going to show a um, the assets that are going to be within one year. So. That that is pretty self-evident here because you have one year right here, and that's going to be dealing with 2013, and that's going to be dealing with with 20, 2014 as well. So that's going to be within one uh, one year. Now, one thing that I I'd like to bring up, and I'm going to bring up just for that matter, is the fact that technology nowadays, as you all know, plays an integral role in our businesses and organizations, and this is something that we need in order to satisfy our patients and our and our customers, literally our customers. So that being the case, we need to update our technology. Now, technology is going to improve our organization. Why? Because people are going to see the advancements. The people are going to understand that we, we care about them, not only about their health, but giving them other opportunities for them to look at their medical records, for us to chart them properly, et cetera. So the figures will eventually go up. 
the revenue will go up, but perhaps the output that we're going to be using will also go up as well. Why? Because we're investing in technology, and that technology is imperative for success in the organization, so we're putting out more money in, in order to, um, to get more patients in, which is, which is obviously, um, you know, the big, the big area. Now, um, what I'd like to show you here is also dealing with, I hope, uh, I hope you can see this a lot better than I can. <laughs> this is just wow. Okay, long-term debt over here, and then the capital release obligations are right, uh, right below it. And this will be um, long-term debt, LTD, and that's uh, being paid off now faster. And the reason why is because they're sustaining more, more revenue. So the LTD, long-term debt, is being paid off a lot quicker due to the fact that there's more, more revenue that's, that's coming in. Now, the capital leases here that I just, that I just um, circled on the screen there, the capital leases as well are going to be able to be paid off sooner because there's more revenue that's, that's going to be um, coming in. So you can, you can see that um, through that as well as your, your accounts payable, all this, is, all this is taking place because of improvements, improvements financially, and de thus demonstrating that this is going to be a, a soluble organization, okay? All right. Now, the statement of CFs, okay, and that is cash flow, okay, then I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even going to try and write cursive with this little, <laughs> this little pencil, pencil, just so you know, CF cash flow, and I have it <laughs> written down in front of me as, uh, as well. So this, is, this cash flow, this is going to be actually your operating income, okay, so whatever the financial organization is, is doing and your accountants are doing, this is going to be your operating income. Once again, this, the zeros over here for the purposes of our, our case study here is going to be dealing with uh, things in the million. So this is going to, the cash flow is coming from an operating activity and an operating, operating standpoint. And one, one area I do want to bring to mind is that the depreciation here is uh, going to be a non cash item. So it's not actually going to be fully in, included in here. So you, you're, you're wondering, like, okay, well, how do they get all these, uh, all these numbers and how are they um, figuring out that this is, uh, this is working, working this well? Well, again, this goes back to my previous point and the previous slide that we just did. The overall investment in your, in your property and your equipment is, is going to be Giving, giving you that, that little push, okay? So you're looking at your, your overall operating income, and you're going to be adding, if you're wondering where these figures are coming from. So I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to try and break it down for you as, as best, best I can, okay? So you're looking at this here with this depreciation, and hopefully I can fit it, that number, number right there, okay? So you're looking at a, a positive, uh, positive approach here. So you're going, you're going to basically <clears throat> add it and subtract. If you look carefully, you will notice that right here with these three numbers right there, those are in parentheses. And you're saying, Dr. Milan, what does that mean? Originally, I was like, those are good numbers. No, they're not. It's, it's, it's minus. It's, it's negative, uh, negative numbers. So but what you're going to do with this <clears throat> is you're going to take your depreciation, your top, top number here, and then you're going to, for example, subtract the 1,001,002, the, the next number down there, 195, minus 438, and then plus, uh, I think it's 229, and then you're going to come up with that number right there with the, the net cash flow for your, for your operations, okay? 
that's what that's what it's going to <clears throat> that's what it's going to look like. Excuse me. Oh, so much better. So anything again that's going to be in those little little parentheses right there that is going to be a payout <clears throat> and it's going to create <clears throat> a more negative <clears throat> sorry <clears throat> a more negative um, outcome here. So now the the short term um, securities here are between two and two and four million and that's going to be for twenty uh, 2013 and 20, 2014, okay? So again, I'm not going to go through each and every area. I just wanted to bring up some of the main points that are there regarding um, this, uh, this topic. But now, the net cash flow, your overall net cash flow that's going to occur here <clears throat> is going to come from um, a combination of your, your operations, okay, investments, investing, and then also your your financing. And eventually, once you add all those together, then you're going to have your, your net increase or you're going to have a net decrease, and that's going to give you your, your eventual cash, um, your, your cash equivalency, then, okay? So that's, uh, that's where we stand with, uh, with the CFs in, uh, in that manner. So your, your cash flow in this instance here, the operations that, that are provided, we just demonstrated that we, we are at a nine, uh, little over nine million in net cash flow from 2014, which is good. Riverside invested approximately 6.2 uh, million for both uh, fixed assets and short term, which we just discussed. And then Riverside also paid off approximately 5.75 million here in, the, in debt, as well as a, the uh, two million um, plus in uh, non-operating income, and then when all the all the flows are put together and cash flows are, are considered, the hospital's cash amount to then um, decreased by um, eight to eight hundred thirty-two thousand. So that's just a, a general synopsis of what we just uh, just went over regarding the. Um, um, the past few balance uh, balance sheets as well as the the cash flow. I do have a video here. I'm going to give your uh, brain a brain a rest for a little bit. I don't know if you had the opportunity to go in and and do the the inflation video. Now the inflation video is a little bit outdated, but the general idea is I wanted to get you the concept of inflation and, and such. I thought this gentleman did a good job regarding inflation. If, if you did see the video, my apologies to you again for, for over-repeating, but if, for those of you who haven't had the opportunity due to that little thing called life, um, I will um, definitely give you the upper, uh, opportunity here to, to view this, let me pull, if I can pull it up. That, and then we go back to the collaborate session. Yes, we're there. We do the web tour, and then the video, and we cut, and we paste. Now, I'm going to go silent, so hopefully you guys can see this when it comes up. Hi, my name is Patty Hirsch. I'm a I just love that guy because I mean his personality. I mean he's he's very obviously focused and uh, and dry, and he just likes going and methodically going through things like that with uh, with these finances. But uh, the reason why I'm like that guy fits my personality. Yeah. We're, otherwise, we're gonna we're gonna need uh, an adult soda. Bam. He's uh, <laughs> He, he throws his pen out like, yeah, it's going to cost us a lot more to, to get that adult soda. Yeah, I, I agree. He, he explained it very well. And for somebody with uh, with Dane Bramage, like myself, yes, he definitely helped me out along uh, along the way. So, okay, very uh, very quickly, where are we? Holy cow, he's a beat. Already 45 minutes in. Okay, I'm going to try and get through the next uh, couple sets of slides here. Now, in picking up from where we just left off with our previous slide here about cash flow analysis, okay, 
Now we're going to be looking at a little bit about the ratio analysis here. And the ratio analysis, this is a technique for both the financial statement and your, your operator operating indicators here. So what you're doing is that your uh, ratio analysis, if you could just picture this, and again, I like, I like basics, I like being right down to earth, you're comparing apples to apples over here. So in other words, you're going to be comparing to 2013 and 2014 for the purposes of our discussion. You're going to compare that in a, a vertical um, ratio analysis. I'll explain hopefully here in a minute or two. Then you're going to take a look at comparing, again, the same scale of hospitals. So somebody that's going to be similar to us in nature <clears throat> within the industry and you're going to be taking a look at the horizontal ratio analysis going, going across, okay? So this is just a little bit, little bit different than what we're looking at vertically here. You're, you're comparing and, and contrasting with uh, your 2013 and 2014 horizontally you're looking at hospital, another hospital that's going to be pretty similar to ours within the same um, same area. Now your, your categories for your financial ratio analysis or your RA as I like to refer to. There's another acronym. So your RA, how profitable um, is the company going to going to be in this in this situation? So we have to look at all these areas here. Profitability. Are there sufficient enough profits that, that are coming through? Liquidity. Um, are the business transactions going to be able to meet those financial obligations that, that we have undertaken? Debt management, the right mix, like they're saying here, as far as uh, debt versus, uh, versus equity. And then asset management. Well, do we have enough assets here within the organization and the volume of services that, that it provides? So those, these are a whole, whole mix of things that you need to consider for our hospital scenario here. Now, interpreting these uh, ratios, for example, now in looking at this, the ratio value has uh, basically little or no meaning. So for example, we're just looking at a, a basic margin of 7% um, of seven, um, seven here. So now we're going to look at what the trends are and what the comparing and contrasting, much like I, I just mentioned, of the, the time series, which was, were the dates, and the cross-sectional, which will be the other hospitals that may, may be involved. So again, your vertical trend will be here for your, your trend and your time series, 2014 and 2013, and then your comparative, your cross-sectional analysis here is going to be comparing the same scale of a hospital within a, within a, a same area. So both, uh, both techniques here, hopefully I can get to them very quickly. Um, will be will be examined for you. Okay. So your profitability uh, ratios here for then we're going to look at at 20, 2014. And I have notes everywhere <laughs> to get to, to get this done. So keep in mind that this is for 20, 2014 and you're looking at uh, your your total margin here. And that's composed of uh, both operating and uh, your your non operating um, expenses. As you, as you can see at the, at the bottom of the slide here, hopefully, you have your operating and your, your non-operating. So that's where, we're, that's where we're kind of at. So your net income in millions, again, keep in mind that with the zeros that I was telling you, in millions, you're looking in, at uh, six, uh, uh, where are we, six million, four hundred seventy-four thousand, plus you're, you're going to add um, that Two, uh, two million um, zero ninety eight together, okay. And what that is going to give you that is the total um, net income, okay. So that that's going to to be here. That is going to put you right there. Oh, I even drew an arrow. Oh my gosh, you guys are going to be impressed. You're going to be like that, Dr. Mylan. He's got it together. Look at that guy. All right. So we're looking at eight million five hundred seventy two two thousand. Okay, then your um, overall total revenue. So you're looking at your total revenue. That's going to be right here with uh, 
that number. You're getting that number basically from adding right down here that number 112 plus 2, that's going to give you that, that figure in here. Okay? So that's where you're getting that total revenue up, uh, up above here. All right? So for, let, me, um, let me give you an example here. So the margin that, uh, that you have, and that, that's going to show you here. Here's your margin, that one that I'm circling there. I guess I need now to, uh, to practice and learn how to, how to do different pens and, and different uh, colors and strokes and, and things. So maybe next time I'm working on it. So this is going to be your margin here of 7.55%. Uh, uh, now, something to consider here. Both of these are coming from the income statement. And the reason why, it makes sense. You're talking, talking about um, your net income. All right, I'm changing over to blue. Let's see if it works. Oh, yes, it does. Look at that. I'm so talented. Gosh, I'm impressing myself. Net income makes sense, right, because we're talking about Income. Both are coming from the income income statement. That's where this is coming from regarding your profitability ratios. In looking at uh, your other margin, here's your other margin right there at at 5.8 percent. And again, this is your operating makes makes sense. That's your operating operating margin. Okay. So that's where your operating margin is going to come into pl into play. What this is uh, meaning here, for example, if you happen to get a hundred a hundred dollars and uh, you're going to make that uh, as far as your operating revenues, that means eventually you are earning money. You're making money here for the bottom one, this 5.8 here. So the hospital has made 5.8 dollars out of the, the $100 that um, has been there for the operational revenues. That's exactly what that means in, in simplistic and very, uh, very Dr. Mylan terms, okay? <laughs> okay. So we'll, we'll keep it uh, at that. All right, I have time to show you one more slide, and then we're going to be at time because I respect your time, and I want you to cut out because I'm, I'm sure your heads are, like, pounding and throbbing and, and thinking, oh, my gosh, where did this come from? All right. The next one that we have, I should say the last one that we have for today, we're going to be looking at um, the, the net income and total equity. Now, the total equity is going to be coming from your balance sheet, all right? Now, your total equity comes from the balance sheet, and what the balance sheet is going to be telling you all is that you're going to total your assets, your liabilities, what else do I have here? Oh, and your, your equity. So the abbreviations I like to use are TE, to, total equity, okay? Then your TL, total liability. And then your TA, which that equals your total assets, okay? Break it, breaking, it, um, breaking it down into that. Now, breaking this down even further, give it, I'm excited about this. You're, if you're the owner of this particular hospital, you are going to be looking at, yes, I will get to that in a second, I think it's uh, return on equity, ROE, return on equity. So if you're the owner of, of this particular establishment and you're putting uh, money in there, that is going to be your TE, your total equity. You're putting it in into the facility here. Now, your total liability is when you're going to be borrowing that money, for example, from the bank. And that's what your total liability is going to be, your, your TL. Now, all the wonderful acronyms that are over here on the, on the side, and this is, is going to mean TM, total margin, OM, operating margin. ROA, return on asset, and then much like I just mentioned uh, to one of your colleagues here, the ROE is return on equity. So if you look at look at this here, 
vertically, right, right there, they're doing pretty, doing pretty well over overall. And the and the reason why is it because if you compare it to, to 2013, and I know this thing moved over a little bit, this green one obviously should be over here. But if you look at 2013, which is that column there, you could you could see that in 2014 it's it's outperforming. Now the one thing I would like to bring to your attention is this bottom number here with the ROE, as well as the main industry. That's what IND stands for, abbreviated industry. When you're looking at the, the industry overall, it's uh, Comparable, but maybe a little, a little bit less. But, but up here, with your your total margin, this number here going horizontally, comparing it to the industry, you're out, outperforming them in the industry. The only area that might be quote unquote lacking per se is going to be this bottom one here with that 8.0 and that in the 8.4 over here with the with the industry. So all in all. The, the hospital is doing very well and is able to to sustain itself. Well, we're coming at, at the uh, the hour here, and I, I'm respectful of your time. I do have tons more, which I knew that I wouldn't be able to get to because there's so much to, to go over in a short period of time. But I will put these PowerPoint presentations <coughs> up on uh, up on the slides. Up on the slides. <laughs> How about up on the announcements? There we go. The slides will be on the announcements. Like I did the last time, I will have the recording available to you once it catches up and it uh, it downloads, and I will get that information out to you. Please remember to get your assignments in in a timely manner. Oh, you you bet. Hopefully, hopefully you you were able to follow it through. And I'm I'm very methodical in this stuff because it can get confusing as as you can see. And, and working through each and every one of these areas can be can be very difficult, especially if it's you know not in your your wheelhouse or your, your bailiwick, uh, so to speak. So yeah, so I'm trying to to make it as easy as um, as possible to follow follow along. You're welcome. So make sure that your assignments here are in on, on time if you have any issues. Again, the guys that have had me before, you know I'm flexible to uh, to a point. Please email me and let me know, hey, I'm, I'm having an issue. I've got things going on at work and, uh, you know, the wife and kids are, are, are driving me crazy. This is what I have going on. It's okay. It's okay. It's called life. I get it. This is academic life, and then you have this other life out here, like I said. So those of you who are becoming familiar with me, Please know that I'm here to help you out and get you get you moving along in the in the right direction. So, any questions? You know where to find me. We will meet again in two weeks on uh, Monday once again, and then um, we will also just have a brief review of uh, the, the midterm examination and answer any questions that you may have, and we'll kind of go from there. So, thank you once again. I greatly appreciate your participation. With uh, with that, hopefully the video was uh, well worthwhile for you. And hopefully you picked up on a little bit of tidbits of information from, from here. So I bid you adieu. Have a great evening. Go home to your families. Get something to eat for me as well. <laughs> Do all take care now.